Um, let me tell you a little bit about the IPS group. IPS stands for uh, Intercontinental Press Service. We are a group of companies. Um, you know, we started initially as a, a German national distributor, um, distributing international press and, and, and German press in the German market. Uh, we, we have um, a lot of know-how in logistics. We, we are also a digital printer in Italy, where we print newspapers on digital printing machines in uh, Milan and Rome. Um, talking about Italy, we are a, a national distributor in, uh, in Italy. You know, Mass Inter is, has been renamed to EPS Italia in, in recent days, so that's why I, you see a different name here. And uh, EPS Italia basically imports international press into the Italian market, but is also a, a book distributor that um, distributes about 37,000 book titles, uh, about 1 million books a year across all of Italy to about three and a half thousand uh, bookstores, you know, from, from a big bookstore in, in Milan to a small bookstore in Sicily. So we cover, cover the entire market. Being a German company, we are also uh, responsible for the export of German press uh, worldwide. And this is where it, it becomes interesting for you at a later stage in the presentation. We'll, we'll show you how relevant that is or could be for you, for your titles coming to Europe. And last but not least, we are also a, a subscription fulfillment company. So we manage subscriptions for German publishers and international publishers for, for the European market. So if that is of interest, we can also talk about that a little, a little bit later. Now, just quickly, our company, so full service provider for press products, we are family owned. Uh, the, the family owners are still active in the company. We are independent of any publishing house, so we are quite neutral in, 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 in our operations. And I mentioned we have um, you know, offices in Germany and in Italy, so we have uh, our headquarters near Cologne. You see a picture of, of our building. Uh, we have an office in Hamburg and Frankfurt, and in Italy, we, we have offices in, uh, in Milan and Rome. And to put a bit of life to the company, see some of the people that work for us. Uh, you see the headcounts that we have. We have people you know, from different nationalities. We have obviously German and Italian. We have Dutch, we have Russian, we have people from Iraq. So we are quite a multicultural uh, group of people and uh, with, with uh, language knowledge and, and, and a lot of know-how about uh, press distribution in, in the European market. I mentioned earlier, this is what we do. We, we uh, distribute over 5,000 magazines and newspapers, uh, adds up to about 120 million copies distributed every year. Um, in terms of our export that we do for our German publishers, we go to over 70 countries. Uh, and I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of book titles that we are distributing in, uh, in Italy, books from the United States, from the UK, from, from Germany, Spain, uh, or France. So we're quite uh, internationally minded. Uh, and, and Although we started as a, as a German national company, I think uh, more than 50% of our turnover is now international. Here's some of the publications that we, uh, that we uh, distribute, that we work with. Uh, you, you will recognize some of the names, The Economist, Time, Monaco, quite uh, important brands, but even some French uh, publications like uh, the Figaro magazine. Uh, and on the newspaper side, we represent uh, publications like Le Monde, uh, L'Equipe, uh, Libération, but also the New York Times and uh, some of the bigger German news newspapers like Frankfurter Allgemeine and uh, Süddeutsche Zeitung. So just to show our coverage, and when you see uh, US and Canada, that's mainly subscription distribution of our German publications, but for the rest, it's mainly a retail distribution in Europe, uh, Middle East, Africa, and uh, Asia and, and Asia Pacific. Just some examples. The Spiegel is the uh, most important uh, political daily of, of, sorry, weekly of, of Germany. So we are responsible to make sure that the reader of the Spiegel can buy it in, in Barcelona or in London or in, in, in Stockholm. So we, we manage their distribution uh, outside Germany. Important for our discussion later is that we are responsible for the import of US titles into Europe, into continental Europe. So we work with, uh, with CMG, with the uh, portfolio. And I've mentioned some of the important names, but there are also smaller publications, you know, that, that cover lifestyle or, or 
crafts. Uh, you know, it's not always the, the, the big famous titles that everybody knows, but also some of the smaller titles that are interested in, in covering the, the European market. And we make sure they, they get to Paris, Rome or Lisbon, you know, on a, on a frequent uh, basis. Also publication that you will know, Time Magazine, we are responsible for their uh, circulation admin. So to make sure that, uh, you know, copies are built and money is collected, you know, we work with multiple uh, bank accounts in, in, in different regions of the world. We, we work with different currencies, uh, financial reconciliation and the currency of the, the publisher. In this case, it's US dollars. And uh, so we are uh, doing this in Europe, at least Africa, Asia, and, uh, and the South Pacific. Again, another title that you will know, National Geographic, but this is then the US edition that we distribute in, in 25 markets imported from the United States. Uh, we, we take care of the entire retail distribution, draw management, copy allocation. We do, the, uh, again, billing and collection, multiple currencies. And also, most importantly, we, we manage their marketing uh, in, in the European markets that we cover. And in, in that context, we, we do the planning, we do the uh, return on investment analysis and the cost per order analysis. So a lot of the Functions that you might be interested in are, are covered for one of the other publications that we, uh, that we distribute. Last but not least, uh, we are also responsible for the financial admin of the economists in Central Europe, uh, Middle East, and Africa. And we make sure that the economists' bills are paid and that uh, we get the returns from, from the markets and make sure that uh, the publication can reconcile the uh, financial and, and distribution figures uh, on, a, on a monthly basis. Having said all of that, um, I'll now turn it over to Ingo. So he will tell you a little bit more about the European markets and the relevant, the relevance of some European countries uh, for your product coming into Europe. Ingo, over to you. Thanks, Luciano. Um, yeah, as we just learned from Lisanne, Western Europe is the second largest press market in the world and only China is larger. Based on circulation revenue, five European countries are in the world's top 10, which are the Germany, France, UK, Italy, and Austria. Um, considering that Canadian publications are written either in French or English, we need to look into the language preferences of the individual countries for better understanding. Um, you can see here that for French language publications, the key markets are, of course, France, Belgium, Switzerland, which has a big French speaking part, Luxembourg, Spain and Italy. And for English publications, the key markets are, of course, UK and Ireland, but Scandinavian, uh, Germany, the Benelux, Portugal, Austria, and again, Switzerland, they're the German speaking part. So next we have to look into are uh, the publishing categories which are successful in the various European countries. The most interesting products being imported are, for example, bookazines, which became more and more popular, as Lisanne already mentioned before, specialist hobby and leisure magazines, lifestyle themes, and last but not least, general interest titles. But we are very sure that there are many dedicated Canadian themes, which are also of interest to the readers in Europe as well. So IPS would evaluate specific categories across Europe for the potential titles, would do SWAT analysis per title, we would review language and market penetration, and look at feasibility and do profit and loss analysis. Together, we would dive in very deeply into the selected markets. Take, for example, Germany. With nearly 90,000 press selling retailers, Germany has the highest density of press shops in the world. That means there are 11 shops per 10,000 inhabitants across the country. Every German press shop stock as an average around 200 different titles. That does not sound much, but given that the average assortment of permanent available publications in Germany lies at around 1,900 publications, and the order assortment sums up to 6,000 different press products. And in addition to that, the turnover of press products, for example, in the year 2020, and which was a pandemic year already, sums up to nearly 3 billion US dollar. You can see how important press is for the German population. And this is only one country in Europe. 
But don't worry, IPS will provide you with a comprehensive basis for decision making. And Luciano will now continue with some more benefits for you. Yeah, so we talked about, um, you know, getting the product into Europe. It sounds very easy. How do I get my, my publication from, from Vancouver to, uh, to Paris or Rome? Sounds like an impossible job. But um, I mentioned earlier that we, that we manage the, uh, the import of U.S. Uh, publications uh, into Europe. So what we have, we have a, a logistic partner in New York that basically uh, receives all the various publications in, in their warehouse and basically consolidates it into a weekly shipment to Europe. Uh, there are two ways to, uh, to ship uh, copies to, to Europe. You can do it by, by air freight. You can do it by, by sea freight. Air freight usually only done for time-sensitive publications that, that have to be in Europe on a, on a particular day. Doesn't happen very often, to be honest. The majority of the titles are shipped by sea freight, and that usually takes about, uh, takes about four weeks. Every week, a ship leaves uh, the United States and arrives in a harbor in Europe. At the moment, it's Rotterdam. It could be also Antwerp or, or Hamburg. Um, there, we, we clear the goods. We then uh, transport it to one of our warehouses in Germany. And once it arrives there, we start to, uh, to split up the, the consignment into you know, markets you know, by, by, by title, by language, and make sure that we have the right consignment for, for the right markets. From Germany, we go to the UK, we go to Spain, we go to Italy, we go to Scandinavia. We cover, in principle, all the markets from Germany. You would say, well, why from Germany? Well, simply because we export our, our German magazines uh, um, and are able to use the network that exists, the road and air freight network from Germany into these various markets. So it's very easy uh, to, to get to the, the various markets. We will make sure that uh, all customs regulations are, are adhered to, that we provide all the right customs paperwork and uh, that we deal with, with, with VAT matters. And if you look at Europe, you have uh, basically members of the European Union and non-members of the European Union. So customs takes place, customs clearance takes place, for example, in, in the UK or in, uh, in, in Switzerland. So basically, what you would have to do as a publisher, you would have to deliver to New York, to a warehouse. And from there, it basically is taken over by us and we will make sure it gets to the final destination in Europe, and that could be uh, a newsstand in in Rome, or or a newsstand in in, in Lisbon, or or in Oslo, or in Stockholm. So all of that is taken care of by, by us. Now, what we do is basically what you are used to in uh, in, in Canada. I'm pretty sure you know we make sure that we uh, first of all decide which publication should go to which markets, which is something that we would do together with you. Decide okay, which market is relevant could be based on language, could be based on content. Uh, you know, we would make sure that we would analyze the market as Inko said earlier, to make sure that, you know, there is a relevance for your product. Uh, you know, if you have a puzzle magazine, don't do it because we already have enough of them. So it has to be really uh, well looked at what, what type makes sense in, 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 in which market. So, and once that is done, we will, we will then work with the local distributor and, and based on pilot titles, on, on comparable titles, set up a distribution and um, to make sure that we are present in, in all the relevant uh, sales locations. And from there on, it, it base, it's basically a business as usual. You know, we, we, we provide you with a print order, we do the invoicing of the local distributor, and it could be in euros, it could be in Swiss francs or British pounds, it doesn't really matter, multiple currencies. We take care of all the VAT and interest set declarations that are required. And, and besides newsstands, we could also uh, deliver to hotels and airlines or, or different kinds of venue if, if that is a, is a requirement. Now, it's important to, to understand that um, if you, Ingo just talked about the German market, but there are more examples where, where we are talking about mature markets, you know, markets that cover a lot of segments that, that have very high quality publications. So it will be really important to understand does it really make sense for my title to be in Europe? Uh, you know, what is the competition? What is already a present? Do I add something new? Then it's of course very relevant. Uh, or do I already provide what is already provided by, by multiple other publishers, which would really 
make the success rate a lot smaller. That's something we would we would do in the deal. We you know we do a risk analysis. So we say okay, does it make sense for a particular publication to be in in all of Europe or maybe in certain markets or maybe not at all? And I think there we have to be really honest with each other. And it doesn't make sense to just start distributing and then you know you, you generate only on so that that makes sense. Uh, makes, no, makes no sense to me. That's a, that's a really individual conversation that we need to have. And, and we'll be quite frank with you and say, okay, this makes sense or, or maybe it doesn't make sense. Now, when you are already in Europe, then we will, of course, make sure that we are representing you and your titles, um, of course, within DistroPress, which, which obviously we are a member of, but also at other industry events in Europe whether they are our own uh, events. We have an international media conference in Germany where, you, where we would like you to attend if you can, but if, if that's not possible, we would do it virtually. Uh, we attend uh, the French uh, publishing business days and, or the Spanish business days and represent our titles uh, and, and our publications uh, with, with local distribu distributors. So again, the, the, the sales development that we're going to do is really market specific. Uh, we also look at seasonality and you know, if you have a, you know, a title that covers travel then maybe it makes sense to be uh, available in certain parts of the, of the year in certain markets again it's something we would work out together with you we, we obviously need to understand the publication we need to, un to understand the content that you provide and we'll have a, a discussion with you on where where we think the best distribution can can take place and of course, as Lizanne mentioned earlier, we as distributors in Europe, we are keen to have information about the publications that we distribute. You know, we want to know what is the editorial focus? Are there any special issues that we need to focus on or covers or particular topics that could be relevant in, in Germany, but maybe not so relevant in Spain? So it's really uh, an, an ongoing discussion that we need to have with you to A, to better understand uh, your, your wishes and your goals and to better understand your publications. And to make sure that we come up with a tailor-made uh, distribution network in, uh, in Europe. And once we've established that, once we have your publication in the market, obviously we will report to you and, and, and also in a lot of detail, uh, you know, we, we will provide you with the reports that you, that you need, you know, by title, of course, by country. Um, and if you have auditing requirements, we can also provide you with the data in such format that you can use it for your audits. Um, and, and of course, also very important, we will make sure we get the financial reports that show you exactly, you know, what you generated in which markets uh, and to understand, you know, which, which market is profitable, which one is not, where can I have, where do I have to change, uh, maybe change the volumes or the, the billing pro of the, the cover price. So there's a lot of uh, possibilities that we uh, can go through together with you to make sure that uh, we have a more, very optimal uh, situation. Again, we we, uh, we would communicate with you on a, on a regular basis, ideally via uh, video calls and, and as often as you like. Uh, of course, we have daily contacts and just certainly in the beginning, we would be in contact with you a lot to make sure we understand uh, the various issues that are uh, today. So uh, good communication, is, as, as uh, Lizanne mentioned earlier, is extremely important in, in this business. Just a quick a few pictures of our, our media conference. The media conference that we organize is basically similar to this repress. We give each publisher the opportunity to meet with the local distributor, talk about his or her product, to explain uh, the features, to come, to come up with, with, with certain new titles and, and explain what they're all about. And basically, um, it's great for the distributor to, to, to hear firsthand from the publisher what, what the publication is all about. You know, of course, we can do a lot of that uh, once we understand uh, your publication, but of course, it, it's always more ideal when the publisher does it. Uh, Last but not least, marketing is something that is always very important. You have a new publication, you enter a new market, nobody knows that you're there, you, you know, you, your impulse buys are important, but sometimes it's also key to do some promotions and some of the public publications that, we're, that we represent are already doing this in key markets. Uh, you know, maybe if you have a French, French publication, you want to focus on, on Paris or you want to focus on Geneva to make sure you have optimum uh, presence. And that we would manage all of that for you. We make sure we, we find the right locations uh, and, and, and make sure that the promotions are executed in a proper way. And we will 
provide you with the right documentation so you can see what has happened and analyze the results, decide whether it makes sense to continue or to change. So there's a lot of uh, interaction that, uh, that takes place. So basically, in a nutshell, uh, Europe, yes, it's, it's, it's a continent, multiple countries, multiple languages, a lot of difficulties, but uh, I hope that uh, through this presentation, you, you, you got, a, got a sense that there is an easy way to get into the market. Uh, and you know, we are a consolidator and we are able to, to, uh, to take away a lot of the headaches and a lot of the stumbling blocks that you might see when, when you look at it from, from a different continent. And um, what we would suggest if, if indeed you are serious about um, entering the European market, and be it at a, at a small scale, again, I want to, to emphasize that when we look at our US portfolio, we're not talking only about the Vogue's and the Cosmopolitan's. We are also talking about publications that, that maybe distribute a few hundred copies in, in a particular market. So it doesn't have to be big volume. It can be very niche. Uh, as long as we can consolidate it with existing networks, uh, it should really make a, make a big difference. So what I would say finally is uh, if there's an interest in, in Europe, if you want to learn more, then we're happy to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and try to go into more of the details and, and present you with the, you know, with a with a SWOT analysis, what, what, what are the opportunities, what are the risks, and, and, and how should you uh, uh, look at Europe uh, for a particular publication? So that's really all of it from, from, from my side. Um, um, I hope uh, it's all been very clear. Uh, and uh, Ingo and I, and, and Lizanne, of course, were more than happy to, to answer any questions about this. Uh, this complex, but for us, maybe a little bit more simple marketplace that's called Europe. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, I do have a few questions to start us off. Um, the first one is, what system do you have set up for delivery and logistics for Canadian publications? If it's through your US contact, uh, do you envision any problems with publications crossing our border? Interesting question. Um, you have to cross uh, into into the United States. Of course, you have to cross a border. That's clear. Um, I'm not 100% sure what that means, whether that's relatively simple or not. I'm, I'm not an expert on the U.S. American uh, of U.S. Canadian border situation, and but I'm sure there there are some certain regulations, and I would imagine that some of you already export to the United States. So um, you know, we would receive the, the goods in, uh, in, in in the states, but if if there are some issues uh, concerning customs clearance and, and border issues between Canada and the United States, we would have we would have our U.S. agents deal with that. So as a publisher, you say, well, I have no idea how how to get to to the United States. Then our our agent in in New York will uh, will take care of that. So I'm, I'm not sure about the specifics because this would be a, a first unique situation, but I don't think it would be too much of a problem. And as a publisher, we would say, okay, we'll let our agent deal with it and, 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 and we'll tell you exactly what needs to be done. Amazing, great. Okay, the next question is about marketing. Uh, can you speak to how Canadian magazines should tailor their marketing materials and publications to appeal to European audiences and clients? Uh, one of our colleagues uh, commented that um, there needs to be a consideration of graphic design because the European style is different from the Canadian design and sometimes uh, European taste will not necessarily appreciate Canadian design for marketing materials. So do you have any advice on that? It's a good point. I mean, we, um, we, we have uh, an international marketing department that would be able to provide you with the right uh, graphics or the right uh, text or the right way to approach the, the European market. And you're quite right. Not every country is the same. Uh, so we, we tend to um, look at each market individually and, and come up with a concept that we would, uh, would share with you. Obviously, we would have to look at what you're currently doing in the a, in, in a Canadian market, see what needs to be adapted for Europe, or even see what needs to be adapted for European markets. You know, Italy is different than, 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 than Sweden. 
So the, the emotional aspect is, is, is key. How do I speak to people's emotions? In some cases, it's important. Germany is probably a bit more uh, business-like, so it may be a more business-like approach makes sense in, in the German market. Uh, so there are differences, absolutely, cultural differences that need to be taken into consideration, but we, we would be able to, to give you the advice on, on how to approach that in the, in the best way. Great, thank you for that. All right, the next question is about your upcoming event. Uh, would you recommend uh, that there be an exhibit of Canadian publishers at the event, or would you recommend that Canadian publishers attend as delegates? Well, I mean, um, the, the, the physical presence makes, of course, a lot of sense because you, you as a publisher are able, as nobody else, to, to, to talk about your publication. I mean, you, you've you've created it. You have you know you have your emotions in there. You you have your know-how. Uh, you, you can talk about the, the, the specific audience, uh, and and that is always much better in a face-to-face uh, -face conversation. Of course, it's not always possible. Um, at the same time, uh, you know, we, we could take over that role. We could say, okay, you know, we will be briefed, and we will. Uh, with, with the publication in our hands, talk to every single distributor and, and, and present the publication. Uh, you know, that, that's certainly a, a possibility, but it, it is really important that the, the, the local distributor understands the product. And, and we hear a lot from our distributors that we, we, we appreciate what you IPS are doing, but we really like to speak to the publisher. And I fully, I fully agree with that because the publisher is able to talk more about content and more about vision and more about you know how you have to see a particular publication uh, than, than we as a uh, as a distributor could do. So yeah, that that would be the preference. But I understand that that's not always possible. Um, but as I said, you know we are a new age. We can also set up video calls with uh, important uh, importers. You know, if you have a French language publication, we set up a meeting with our French partners or Swiss partners, and, and we do it through a video uh, connection. And I think then you have still the, the publisher able to, to bring across uh, what you think is important about, uh, about the publication. All right, thank you for that. Um, does anyone have any other questions? Remember, you can pop your question in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask it yourself. Maybe maybe just a few words about um, um, Distropress and 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 how we as a company uh, work within Distropress. Uh, it's a really important uh, marketplace. Uh, you, you saw what Lisanne just presented in terms of of information that is available, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, we have a lot of data. We have a lot of information, and and what is even more important, we have publishers talking to each other. Publishers that, are, that, that may be competitors are still talking to each other about the marketplace, about a particular distribution, a uh, particular country. So I think it's it's um, you know uh, you you gather a lot of data, a lot of uh, intelligence that is not available in you know easily in the, in the marketplace. I think that's the the key of, of this repress, and, and I've attended it as a publisher and now as a distributor. It is uh, it offers you a wealth of, of information that that brings your publication a step further. I think it, it helps you to to, uh, to build your business. Uh, and not every conversation will will be like that. It can also be uh, exchanging uh, you know simple issues. But it, sometimes it's really crucial to understand. You know, we, we have certain markets where maybe, for example, the distributor is not paying very well. So we then talk to our colleagues and say, what is your situation? So we, we get some market intelligence that is extremely important for our business. So I think um, just to, 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 to bring that point across, Distropress is for us a really uh, a, key, a key organization. And if you're tru truly thinking about becoming an international uh, publisher. So, if you want to go across the Canadian border into Europe or, or anywhere else in the world, then this repress is probably a good place to, to be. I just want to point to the note Sylvia has popped in the chat. Eligible publishers can apply to Canada Periodical Fund's Business Innovation Program to help them with export initiatives. So, that's mm -hmm. something to keep in mind when you're considering all of these uh, things. Okay, uh, I have uh, another question. Uh, can you suggest any subject or title categories of magazines that are in demand in Germany and France and Scandinavia? 
Yeah, what we see, I think, again, it, it, it's what Ilzan mentioned earlier. Uh, we see a, a lot of bookazines coming into the marketplace and, and, and they cover different topics. I mean, it could be uh, sports, it could be, um, uh, you know, music, uh, it could be different kinds of topics. Uh, and, and they're doing extremely well. So um, again, and each market is different. So, you know, you would have to look at each market individually and say, okay, what works well in France at the moment? Uh, you know, is it, uh, you know, uh, gardening, as, as, as Lisanne just mentioned, has taken a big uh, jump uh, uh, in the same in, in Germany. We see, we see a number of uh, trends and Ingo, maybe you can better explain it than me because you're more the expert on the German market. But um, you know, each market has its individual uh, categories that that really do really well. But I think if you look at the the, the list that Lisan provided, I think that's pretty much uh, how I would see the, the European market as a, as a whole. I think what you can add, uh, particular for Germany, is that we uh, can see that um, food magazines are really performing very well at the moment. We have a very interesting trend in use, youth magazines, which are really increasing quite a lot. House and gardening for sure, sports is something which is very interesting. And as we're talking about the, the all the niche publications, um, so some something very special uh, stuff coming from, from Canada. So just to give you an example, so we've got some diecast magazines coming from the US, but also coming from France and coming from the UK. So all of them are one, have the same topic, but they are so specific that the people in Germany which are interested, let's say in Diecast, they would pick up a, um, a French publication as well as an American publication because there are so many different stuff inside. And so it's always the point to find something special, to find some, some content which is not so much available in our country, but gives you a, big, um, a good um, overview about Canada. Canada is very popular in Germany. So, so if you talk about um, some travel trends, so everyone is saying Canada, and I think it's one of the, one of the um, number one of the list. So that it might be South Africa as well, but, but it's, it's Canada. So everyone says that, that is a really great country and we want to go to there. So if you get information from Canada, it's always very interesting. That's very interesting to hear. Thank you. Um, okay, I have a couple of more questions coming in from uh, Walking Chan. Uh, what is the minimum number of copies we need to export since you have so many points of sale? Ingo, you want to answer it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, we mentioned the, the quite a lot of, of outlets in, in, in Germany, or let's let's go back to the to the five top uh, European countries I mentioned before. So if you look into in total, really 180,000 um, outlets, but not all of the outlets um, sell all publications. So if we, for example, look into again, Germany as one of the markets, out of those 90,000 outlets, we have three and a half thousand outlets which are dedicated to sell international press. But we do not only look into the international press, we do look into the categories. So therefore, there's no limitation. So we, we do have some products which we get from the UK where we just get 10 copies each, just for one country. And we get, let's say, we get 50 copies and those 50 copies we share with Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Luxembourg and some other countries. So there's indeed not a limit. So we are not a limit at the bottom. So we, we start to give you a recommendation which, where we believe that it would make sense. And then we will see how the sales develop and that we see how to, con uh, how to develop the, the publication at all. Yeah, so basically, um, if, you, if you look uh, specifically, uh, specifically about uh, Germany, what does really well are travel points, stations and airports. That's where we sell our international press. And then we are talking about 350. Uh, so 350 points at airports and stations where international press is doing really well. And, and the same will apply to, if you go to the Netherlands. Where will you sell international press? You will sell at, sell at, sell at Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam or the city of Amsterdam. And uh, if you go to Belgium, the majority of the sales will be in Brussels and Brussels airport. So if we narrow it down, we're not talking about thousands of outlets. Uh, and, and again, what we would do is if you have a particular title, we look at pilot titles 
that cover you know the same subject that have the same audience and determine the distribution you know uh, yes you could go out with 10,000 copies does it make sense probably not so we would build it very slowly you know maybe start for a particular market with a few hundred and depending on the sales start to develop it further so uh, I think that's probably the, the the best approach also from a financial point of view take one step at a time and, and maybe be a bit more conservative in, in in opening up the market I think that's that's probably what I would recommend that is what I would recommend yes. All right, another question. Um, what kind of upfront costs should a publisher budget for shipping and other logistics? It's a difficult question because uh, there are a lot of factors. Uh, it, you know, what is the weight of the publication? Because we are going by, by sea freight and we, we, we have weight costs by by road transportation. It's it's, it's very hard to say. I, I think what what I would recommend is I would say give us give us a, a specific title uh, and and which markets you 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 think you want to reach or what would we think we would reach and then we would come up with a with a concept which would include the the, the, the cost of shipping and, and, and distribution i think I, I cannot give you a global figure that that is virtually impossible it, it really there are too many variables in that uh, but um, let's say that there are no fixed costs as far as as, as i can say i mean you you have to deliver to, um, uh, to to New York, then it's consolidated with uh, shipments to, to Europe, and then it's consolidated with shipments through Europe. So it's all consolidated costs, and there are no uh, exclusive costs for a particular publication. So it's all basically weight-based in that sense. All right, um, just going to point to the note Regina has in the chat. Uh, she is pointing out that anti-inflammation content is very popular right now. So if you have that, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, does anyone have any other questions? Okay, Stephen has a question. Let me read it out. Mm -hmm. Can IPS help a small publisher develop a subscriptions <clears throat> business in one country? Is that a big project with high expenses, or are there ways for small publishers to succeed? Yeah, I mean, the, the, there are subscription fulfillment companies in each each market. Um, you know, if we if we look at uh, what we do in Germany, uh, it probably would be hard to do something for. Uh, a publisher that starts with uh, 10 or 20 subscriptions, uh, th that would probably be too small, but there are other companies that offer this service. And uh, so there are companies that, that start with one subscription uh, and irrespective of the market. Uh, we have companies in the Netherlands and in, in Belgium that offer subscription fulfillment, subscription marketing, with the entire range of subscription activities. Um, uh, on a, on a, on a on a single subscription basis. So yes, we, we could come up with uh, a number of companies in Europe that could provide this kind of service, and we would be completely neutral in, in who you would choose to uh, to work with. Remember, Lizanne is here still as well. You can ask her questions about her presentation. All right, another one. Uh, with the cost of shipping, etc., what is the price we can charge for an issue in the outlets in Europe that the consumer would bear? Mm -hmm. Interesting question. Um, when we look at uh, the US publications that are sold in, uh, in Europe, you see that the cover prices are, are fairly high, simply because of the cost of shipping and, and getting the copies across to, to Europe. Uh, what we would do, we would look at uh, comparable titles that are already in the market and provide you with a, a range of cover prices that uh, that you can look at and see if we can fit you know your title in that range uh, obviously we, we need to look at the uh, the cost of the operation to come up with a, with a cover price but ideally we would like you to sit somewhere in between uh, comparable titles in, in europe uh, that is not always possible uh, of course uh, but uh, you know, we, we, we try to uh, to aim at a, you know, let's say a very cost efficient operation. And to be quite honest, uh, if it's a publication that offers something special, we see people paying premium prices. I think Lizanne mentioned it as well. People are will willing to pay a lot more if the content is is, is, is relevant, it's is, is, is good quality, it's, uh, it's unique. 
that people are willing really to pay uh, um, 20, 30, 40 euros for a, for, a, for a copy of a magazine coming from, from uh, the US or from, from the UK. Uh, that's an experience that we've made. If the, if the quality is good, the price is less important. And that, so, I, I, I was just going to say in, in the UK, um, a book zine over here from a domestic publisher is now breaking the £10 barrier. We're seeing 9 99 and higher. And certainly for an import, we'd expect prices above the £10. And I know for sure we have imports on sale here between 10 and 15 and even some up around the £20 mark. So absolutely, if, if it's the right quality and the right content, people are prepared to pay the price nowadays. Um, I have one final question. Where can I find more information on creating a bookazine from archived content? Is that something that might be popular in the market, in the European markets? Yes, I mean we we, we see uh, a, a number of uh, European publishers, um, Future, for example, from the UK, bringing out a lot of bookazines uh, from content that they have in in their archives and. And bringing them out in local language, you know, it, it could be in French, it could be in German. It, uh, so, and, and that is very successful. We just did uh, a number of bookazines for future in German, in the German language, and performed really well. So, if you have good content uh, and you're able to, to package it in a, in a in a quality way, so that it has to be a good quality uh, bookazine. Um, you can charge a good price and you will find an audience. That's that's for sure. Okay, so. Okay, Regina has just mentioned that um, Era Global Works have produced specials from the archived content for Martha Stewart. So you can also reach out to her if you want further information. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, how about a bookazine of the last year of magazines, like the best collected interviews and articles? I'm assuming certainly that would be something of interest and in, that can be um, marketed properly to the European markets. Yeah, yeah it, it all depends on the relevance. Yeah. So what I can say is that a few German publishers did that in the past and they failed with this. Because um, if you already put the content in the market, and if it's only um, interviews and, and some, some more global articles, it doesn't make sense. But if you come up with um, assortment of, let's say, uh, content just for one particular part of it, then it would make sense, but not for, uh, for, uh, for interviews and articles. So if you make, for example, um, if you have a car magazine and you just show the, the best cars of the, of, the, of the last year or the new, newest cars of the uh, last year, then it would make sense. But if you have a news magazine and you just put in the interviews of, um, of the, uh, the last year with, uh, let's say, the, with the uh, presidents and whatever it was, it mostly failed in our country. Uh, how about a bookazine of the last year of magazines? like the best collected interviews and articles. I'm assuming certainly that would be something of interest if that can be um, marketed properly to the European markets, yeah. Yeah, it, it all depends on the relevance. Yeah. So what I can say is that a few German publishers did that in the past and they failed with this. Because um, if you already put the content in the market, and if it's only um, interviews and, and some, some more global articles, it doesn't make sense. But if you come up with um, assortment of, let's say, uh, content just for one particular part of it, then it would make sense, but not for, uh, for, uh, for interviews and articles. So if you make, for example, um, if you have a car magazine and you just show the, the best cars of the, of, the, of the last year or the new, newest cars of the uh, last year, then it would make sense. But if you have a news magazine and you just put in the interviews of, um, of the, uh, the last year with, uh, let's say, the, with the uh, presidents and whatever it was, it mostly failed in our country. Mm -hmm.